Today we're going to be learning to make this Pong game in Multimedia Fusion 2. It has scoring that works and you can play it. It's a two-player game uh, using the keyboard. Both players use just different keys to control. So let's close this out and get started. So the first thing we want to do is go to File, New, and that will get us a new application here. We can maximize this window and we can go into the frame. Now frames would normally be used, multiple frames, to create you win or you lose frames, welcome frames, uh, instructions, and then multiple levels. In this case we're just going to create one simple level. Now normally you would find all of your material, all your graphics and everything, down here in this extensive database here. But just to make things a little bit easier for the sakes, for the purposes of this tutorial, I have all of my graphics here, which I'm going to pull from. So the first thing that we need to do is pull out our graphics. So in this case, I've got my little uh, paddle here, and then my other paddle right here, and then I also have the ball. Now these are the most important elements of the game, so well, let's just start with these. So the first thing we need to do is make this ball move. Uh, to test the game, by the way, as we go, we can hit Run Application. If we hit that, we notice nothing happens except for these uh, graphics elements animate, but nothing else happens. So let's go to this ball and let's go to the movement tab here. And we can hit movement static and we can change that to any one of these uh, already set animation types. So we're going to do bouncing ball. So now our ball should bounce. And we've also got a bunch of other parameters like initial direction, speed, we can change that here, number of angles, randomizer, and security. Security, I think I'm going to turn up a little bit. So what security does is it keeps the ball from getting stuck in a pattern, like for example, bouncing straight up and down the whole time. Um, so that's a good thing to have up if for the purpose of a Pong game like this one. And then we also have to set the movement of these two things here. So let's go to these and let's set this to eight directions. Eight directions lets you control it from the keyboard. Um, this green one is going to be player one. And the directions it's going to be able to move, we want to limit it so it can only move down and up. Because we don't want it moving side to side. That's not how Pong works, right? So that looks good. Let's do the same thing for here. Go to change it to eight directions the directions we're going to limit it down and up and this one we're going to set to player 2. Now if we're using two players one of the um, things that you need to be sure that you do is go to the application properties here and change the default controls of these players. So if you click on edit you can see player 1 is set to up and down uh, for being the up and down arrow. We're going to set that to be Q and A. So if we hit Q, the paddle will move up. If we hit A, it'll move down. And then player two, we're just going to leave up and down arrow as the default. So let's hit OK. We want to make sure we don't close out of the window like that. We want to hit OK, otherwise our settings will not be saved. Now if we run it, we'll notice that the ball just goes off the screen, doesn't come back, and then we can also move these paddles. So that's not exactly what we need uh, ultimately, but it's definitely a good start. So let's go ahead and make this ball interact with the environment. So <clears throat> let's go to our event editor. So we've got two windows. We've got this window here, our, our frame editor, where we can set our graphical elements and the positioning. We also have the event editor, which is where we set all of the conditions, is what we call them in computer programming conditional statements. In what ways do these elements interact with other elements or the screen? So in this case, we want to say, whenever the ball bounces off the top or bottom. So the way we set it to interact with the edge of the screen is with position, test position. So we want to say whenever it leaves in the top of the screen or leaves in the bottom of the screen and hit OK, we want something to happen. We want this ball to bounce. So we right click here and we say movement, bounce. And now if we run this, hopefully we'll get lucky. Yeah, so now it's bouncing off the top and bottom. Um, it still will not interact with our paddle here and it still won't interact with the side. We have to set those individually. So let's make it interact with these paddles. Make a new, another new condition. We're going to say whenever the ball collides with another object, whenever the ball collides with our green paddle, then we're going to set it to bounce. Now a shortcut, we can just click this bounce here and drag it down. And that's just because this is what we want down here, so that's easy. We can also say whenever there's a collision between the ball and this object, that pedal, we want it to bounce as well. So that all looks good and now if we play it, 
Sure enough, as long as we don't miss the ball, let me start that over here. As long as we don't miss the ball, then we're set. But as soon as we miss the ball, it doesn't come back. So we need to set it up so that way when the ball leaves on the left, it scores a point for player two. And whenever it leaves on the right, it scores a point for player one. So we're gonna do that same uh, test position thing. So we right click on the ball here and we say position, test position. When it leaves on the left, okay? when it leaves the play area on the left, then we want something to happen. In this case, we want to give player two a point. So let's right click here and say score, add to score. How much do we want to add to a score? We want to add one point. So we hit the one and we hit okay. We can do the same thing here when the ball leaves on, oops, sorry about that, position, test position, when it leaves on the right, then we're going to add a point on player one score one point on player one score. So now we've got our scoring system that should work perfectly, except the only th re the only problem is that we don't have anything to show us what score each of these players have. So we need to add a score object. So to do that, we have to add a special object. Uh, we can go to insert, new object, and then we can um, scroll, I'll make this window a little bit bigger so we can see a little bit more. We can scroll down to score. Here we go. Okay, and our cursor turns into crosshairs. So we want to click where we want the score object, right there. And we know that that is going to play, be the player one score object. So we can see it here in the settings tab of this pane here. And then we're going to do the same thing for player two. We want a score object. Now a shortcut is you can just double click anywhere where there is no object and it'll assume you want to insert a new object. So we'll insert the score object like that and then we're going to set this to be player 2's score. So now these objects should keep track of their individual scores. So let's test this out. Um, okay, that looked like it worked. The only problem is our ball is not being reset after it leaves the end, right? So I always say in these classes, computers are very stupid. They don't know what you want to do. They only do exactly what you tell them to do. So in this case, we need to not only say add one to the score, we need to tell it we need to reposition this ball. So um, first, let's change the direction of the ball. So when it leaves on the right, we want it to reappear in the middle and be moving to the left. So to change the position, we're going to say bounce here. And we're also going to do the same thing for this. When it leaves on the right side, we're going to have it bounce. And when it leaves on the left side, we're going to have it bounce as well. And then after that, we want to go to position, select position, and we're going to set it right here in the middle, right about here. Say OK. And we're going to do the same thing here. Position, select position, set it somewhere here in the middle, and hit OK. And now, whenever the, let's say if the ball leaves the play area on the left, it'll say, oh, I'm going to execute everything in this list here. I'm going to add one to the score here and I'm going to bounce the ball to change its position and I'm going to set the position to the center of the screen. So now we should have a ball that will reset in the center and bounce. So um, that works pretty darn well. Now we just need to make this game look a little bit uh, prettier so you know let's uh, drag over this little desert island thing here and we can nudge that into place using our arrow keys here. <clears throat> and that looks pretty good. So I'm going to move this score so it's not over that little compass there. And then the other thing is um, when we run this game, the background looks a little bit distracting here. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to make it a little bit more transparent. So I can choose semi-transparent. I'm going to choose 75 as a good coefficient here. And, and sure enough, now we've got a little bit prettier of a game. You can see that ball a little bit better. Now Multimedia Fusion 2 is a very deep application, very extensible and very flexible. So you can create all kinds of games. In this case we just made a very simple Pong clone with rudimentary scoring. But in our adventures courses we go in depth as to how to create games like RPG games, racing games, space shooter games, platform games like Super Mario Brothers. It's a really great application to learn how to use and you can pretty much get any ideas that you have in your head out and onto the computer screen for your friends and family to play. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thanks so much for watching.